The Missing Class is a book about the near poor in America, and it turns out that's a very large group of people. In 2007, when I finished the book, there were about 37 million Americans below the poverty line, but there were 53 million Americans in this group of the near poor who are 100 to 200 percent of the poverty line. And we pay very little attention to them, both in policy terms and in public awareness. I wanted to draw attention to their situation, both the good news and the bad news uh, of their conditions. And I think that's become an even more acute issue now in the economic downturn. In addition to the near poor being a very large group of Americans, they also have some special problems that we need to pay attention to that we tend not to attend to uh, because they're different from the poor. First, they're in debt. Debt is a big issue for the near poor, and that's partly a reflection of their success, actually, because many of the people that we studied for this book had come up from poverty and were now working many, many hours in order to uh, amass a better income profile for their households. But with those many hours of work came expectations for a better standard of living that tended to outstrip their income. So debt is a big problem for the near poor. They are bombarded with predatory lenders who are looking to lend them money and they are at risk for losing what they have um, as a consequence of debt. This is also a group that is highly represented in the uninsured population because they earn too much to qualify for our public programs, Medicaid principally, but they don't work for the kinds of employers who offer private health insurance. So they are in that group that is sorely in need of health insurance, and their children will benefit enormously from the S-CHIP program, um, which was defeated uh, a few years ago and has come back onto the radar screen as I expected it would. So debt, health insurance, um, educational opportunity is very important for the near poor. These are people who realize that both as adults and for their children, education is the key to their continued upward mobility, and it's the best protection against the punishing nature of an economic downturn. Um, but we have a long way to go in making edu public higher education easily available to this group of people. Uh, they tend not to be aware of financial aid that is available um, and to have a great deal of trouble amassing the bureaucratic requirements to qualify. So their children tend to fall between cracks, cracks in the daycare system, cracks in the health care system, cracks in after school care, which is very important. Teenagers whose parents are working many, many hours are left unsupervised in areas that are not always that savory. And so these are kids who if they can get through that, that critical period of adolescence in good shape, they're going to do much better than the children of the, of the desperately poor. But if they're left on their own because their parents are in the labor force and not coming home until later at night, they can really run into trouble and repeat the poverty experience rather than the mobility experience. So there's a great deal we need to do that will benefit millions of Americans um, who aren't in the near poor group, but for health insurance, for educational opportunity, uh, for debt relief, and better consumer education when it comes to things like borrowing and payment terms. So all of these problems are, while not unique to the near poor, setting, do set them aside from the problems of the, those who are way below the poverty line. I just finished a book uh, called Brothers Keepers, which is about the history of public opinion toward government intervention on behalf of the poor in the 1930s, the 1960s, and in the present. And I think it provides some counterintuitive um, results uh, about how Americans really feel about their obligations toward the poor and the role of government in addressing uh, poverty and economic insecurity. We turn out to be a much harsher nation than I thought, um, even in periods for which we are justly renowned for having built um, the American welfare state. So I hope that'll be a contribution to our understanding of what the limits of American solidarity uh, really are.